On the bench here we have a, I guess you would call this a server power supply. Um, I'm not a computer, <laughs> you know, farm, there you go, server farm technician, so uh, I just call them server power supplies. But they're, you know, the big, heavy duty, uh, commercial grade, these aren't those cheap switching power supplies like, uh, you know, a lot of companies sell, you know, as a power, actual, you know, as a power supply. These are designed to be used in commercial use. Um, you know, they stick, slide these things in a server rack and, uh, you know, they stay on 24 hours a day. Um, this is a used one. Actually, I got two dozen of the things. <laughs> uh, now, I'm not going to go answering questions about which one should I buy, how do I wire it, how do I hook it up, because there's just, I, for starters, I'm not a server technician, and these connectors on these things are different for all of them, from my understanding. I figured this one out. It's really simple. There's two wires, because these are not as simple as, because there's an on-off switch on the other side. So it has its power supply, you know, you plug in your 120-volt cord here, and this is the on-off switch for it. But, and the power comes out the back end. I already actually had it, had it lose, because I had to do some circuit tracing and whatnot. And you can see there's a lot of surface mount components on this side. Um, and just this board alone, man, this thing's got some weight to it. You can, uh, you can tell there's, there's a lot of shit on this board. But uh, it's used. All of them were used that I got. And I got them <laughs> extremely dirt cheap. As in like $5 a piece dirt cheap. Um, I have powered all of them up. And one of them did have a problem. This capacitor right here, the instant I turned it on, I heard... And it vented. So, you know, the top of the cap popped out which isn't it's an electrolytic capacitor and that's usually if anything fails in a, a switch mode power supply that's usually what it is electrolytic capacitors so you know i can fix that one i'll probably just keep it for spare parts because i've got a lifetime supply of these blasted things now but uh yeah so what good are they um now i want to hook this up of course you see it has let me get this wire out of the way and you can see it has this funky ass connector on the back. Okay, now this is a 3.3, a 5.5, and a 12 volt power supply. The uh, 3.3 is just supplied through small pins because that's only like at two amps. Now the five, the uh, five volt supply, which is this pin and this pin, they can supply. Oh, where in the hell is the top cover? That can supply 35 amps at five volts and 45 amps peak for 10 milliseconds. And then there's a bunch of ground pins, and then the 12 volt. And the 12 volt, it can supply 52 amps continuous. So that's 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Uh, these are not, like I say, these are not your normal, you know, cheapy power supplies. These things were, were in HP server racks. Um, and then it can supply 60 amps peak for 10 milliseconds. So, you know, it has basically a 60 amp surge, uh, you know, rating. Um, now, like I say, the connectors are different on all of these from what I've been, you know, read up just a little bit on it, and I was out of hell with it. I'll just figure it out, and I went in and figured out what pins I need to short out on this one, because when you plug this in and turn that power switch on in the front, nothing happens, other than these two little lights right here come on. That's it. It absolutely does nothing at all. It's meant to be, you know, computer controlled. So, you know, I guess if a server's doesn't need to be used. The power supply doesn't need to be on. It can shut, you know, another system can shut these down, I guess. But I figured out, like I say, what two pins, this, this one's real simple. Now, some of them are a lot more complicated. There's all kinds of pins. So, like I say, that varies from supply to supply. But what this video is mainly on is how do you hook this up? You know, once you figure that out, you do that on your own. How in the hell are you going to hook up to these oddball ass blade connectors? Because that's what you have to realize. This thing was meant to slide into a rack that has, you know, a power supply. At least this specific model one was designed to go in a rack that had two power supplies. So two of these modules, one on each outside end, and then a shitload of, I guess, their hard drives in the middle. And this is what, these are what sub would supply the power of those hard drives. But, of course, they have edge connectors built in the back of them that they just slide in for quick maintenance. And uh, you can find these things all the time used for sale. Like I say, there seems to be a million different models. But uh, you see them used for sale all the time in working condition because uh, they change these things out by time. It's not like they wait for one of these things to break down, they pull it, slide a new one in. They basically, you know, 
from the day this thing goes in, there's a countdown timer. You know, somebody's standing there. You know, they write down when they were installed, and at a certain specified date, they change them out. Because, like I say, they're on 24 hours, 7 days a week. So, that way, they never have to worry about a failure. You know, server racks going down. They just, when the time comes, they know what the average lifespan, you know, that's pretty much guaranteed to work flawlessly. And once it gets to that point, they pop them and just slide new ones in. So the market's flooded. They're, I mean, you're just, you can't walk out the door without falling over these things, it seems like nowadays. They're just for sale everywhere. Um, but like I say, you're left with this stupid edge connector. Now, I've already cut the top of it out. Uh, hell, I don't even know where that little chunk of plastic is. There it is. There was a, it was completely encased originally, so I just cut out this little piece, came in with a set of uh, diagonal cutters, you know, wire cutters, cut a slit on each side, and then just scored it with a razor knife down there along the back edge. That's why the razor knife is actually sitting here. Scored that, and then just took a pair of pliers, and it snapped right out. So that gives me access to the pins I want, which are the 12-volt and the ground pins. But like I say, you're left, how do you hook up to that? Yeah, you can shove some wires down in there and have that with some kind of plug on the end or something. But, you know, terminal strips are very handy. So that's what I'm doing to this one. I, I buy this stuff by the bar. Comes in, I think they're foot lengths. And then I can just cut them down the length, whatever I need for whatever application. You know, if you need extra holes, you can pop out. Because they come from the factory, they have a hole, you know, mounting hole on each end which all it is is just one of these terminal contacts they just drilled straight through. So, you know, if you need terminal, you know, like three with a screw mounting flange on each end, all you do is, is just drill down straight through, and there's your two mounting ends. But uh, anyhow, I've cut out a piece, and what I'm going to do is is actually set this right here. Uh, put this over down just a little bit more there. Okay. I'm going to put this right here, and then the way I'm going to jumper these you got to remember, this is high current, so you don't want to try drawing all... Kind of, now, what is it? One, two, three, four, five of these pins are ground, and three of these are 12 volt, and then two of them, which I'm not going to use, are the 5 volt supply. So, what I want to do is, is connect all of the pins for the ground and all of the 12 volt pins together to my strip here. I don't just want to rely on connection at the one connector, so what I'm going to do is... I was going to take some, you know, I stripped out some Romex wire, like, you know, you, your house is wired with. Um, I've got piles of this shit laying around all over the place. But you can see I'm just taking pliers. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. I'm going to make a jumper. It's going to slide down in there, just like so. And I'll just continue across. And, you know, I'm making it a double loop there so you can basically see what I'm doing. doesn't need to be pretty. doesn't need to be fancy. But I'll have these wedged down in there going to each of the pins. And then when I get to the other end, I'll run another loop or a piece of wire out. Because that's actually what's going to come out onto my terminal strip then. So I'll have two for the negative and two for the positive. And two pieces of this heavy gauge wire is, you know, solid conductor wire is more than enough for the, uh, you know, 50, what is it, 52 amps continuous that this thing can supply. And besides that, the wire run's only going to be like that long. But, uh, and then, well, I will actually solder this wire to the actual edge connectors here. They're gold-plated, so very easy to solder to. Copper, of course, very easy to solder to. So, like I say, I'll get the jumpers made up here, and then once I have it uh, put together, I can actually show you what my, my final little assembly is. But that just makes it so much easier to connect stuff. Because then you have screw terminals. And then I will also take, where the heck is it, right here, to connect. If you notice, instead of using just two terminals, I'm going to actually have two grounds and two positives on this. The center one, I'll actually pop. And actually, I can show you that. I can show you how these centers pop out. I don't need that. I'm just using that kind of as a spacer in the middle to have some separation between the, the two lines. But these are just pressed in. I get a little tiny screwdriver under here. I'm trying not to jam it into my hand. <laughs> there we go. And there, it just popped out. So there, that's what I'm going to have. But the, I want to connect these two terminals. So what you can get is shorting bars. They make them for terminal strips. So, you know, once I get, get this installed, then I'll just cut out two terminals and two terminals, and I'll make two jumpers. Actually, they go in in this direction. I can make two jumpers. That fit right in there and short the two turn. I don't have to worry about 
coming up with my own jumpers to jump over to the other terminal. But like I say, it keeps everything connected, and that's how it's going to be. And then once I get her, get her all hooked up, I'll, uh, I guess, won't be much to show other than how it is. But uh, like I say, I'll show you it actually connected and that it you know, does work. So you just give me a second here, I'll pause the video, and then we'll come back with a up and running uh, high current 12 volt power slide. Okay, and I've got my little bar on the back and it's hooked up and uh, working. So I'll flip the power switch here. Be forewarned, if you're wearing headphones or have your speaker turned up, uh, you know, your sound turned up really high, turn it down. Uh, that's the one thing about these power supplies. Uh, all I got to say is, uh, computer technicians that work on these racks that these things go in must wear hearing protection because this thing sounds like an F-15 taking off <laughs> of an aircraft carrier. Holy shit, are they loud. Yeah, it's got two, not one fan. There's one fan here, and then there's another fan here, and they're about that thick. So, you know, it's not your standard little thin fans like you see and stuff. These things got some serious blow. I mean, if there's one thing you can say about these supplies, they really blow. <laughs> and it blows out. So it's sucking the air in and blowing. You know, so these are uh, blower. They're just set up to blow, you know, suck the air into the power supply and blow it out. So, yeah, I'm going to get a nice blow drying here when I turn this thing on. But So uh, I'll give you a second. Turn your volume down. So, you can see it's on, and there's the voltage, I'll turn it off, and you can see it has the caps drain in it, so, get her unhooked here and get her spun around. And there's... Like I say, done ugly style, doesn't need to be ever seen again. You know, like I say, I just ran that nice solid heavy wire. There's the terminal strip. You know, nothing fancy, nothing special. Just got down in between each pin, you know, I folded the, each wire that goes down in there goes down and then just folded back up. And then jumpers between all this, so there's five, on this one there's five ground pins and three uh, 12 volt pins. And like I say, these two here on this one are five volt, which I'm not going to be using, at least on this supply. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to use one of these supplies as a high current five, five volt supply, because like I say, it can supply, uh, what is it? Uh, five volts at 35 amps continuous, or 45 amp surge, so... But the, like I say, this makes it a lot more convenient to hook up something. Instead of trying to shove wires in there, praying you get a good connection, or just put a terminal strip on a blasted thing. Like I say, ain't got to be fancy, ain't got to be nothing special. I'm never going to, when I use these supplies, I'm never going to see them again. I'll probably mount them inside of another cabinet or something. Um, you know, and definitely in an adjacent room. Because <laughs> if you're, you're planning on using anything like this for... Uh, you know, radio communications, yeah, you might as well forget it. You're, you're never going to out-talk the fans on these things. <laughs> so there you go. There's just a server power supply turned into just a standalone, uh, you know, 12-volt power supply. Or like I say, you could turn it into a standalone 5-amp or 5-volt power supply. Oh, and those current ratings are all of them combined. So, you know, you can use this thing at 5 volts running... 35 amps full time, 12 volts at 52 amps full time, and 3.3 volts at 2 amps two time. That's what it's rated to run. All of those at continuous duty, and then the, you know the second rating is the surge. But uh, like I say, you know, these things got some weight to them. Yeah, they're not cheap. The capacitors inside, Rubicons, Nichicons. That's all you know, all pretty much brand name stuff. Um, you know the one that the capac the one of them that I do have that a capacitor popped in. Like I say, that's usually the failure mode and. And not just standalone switch mode power supplies, anything nowadays. You know, this is a 52 amp continuous duty power supply, and I can pick it up with one hand. I can you know, almost pretty much balance it on, don't get me wrong, it's heavy, but I can all pretty much, you know, if I could get it to balance, I could hold it with one finger, you know. 
So it's not like it's extremely heavy. You know, you look over there, there's an Astron 50 amp power supply. Um, and that's not 50 amps continuous, but that's a linear power supply with a big honking transformer. And that's why the old power supplies cost so much. Now, personally, I prefer linear power supplies. That's why I have them. Now, there is an exception. There's, well, you can't see it for that piece of paper there. There's a big, huge monster supply. That thing goes way back. That's a Wayne Kerr. Now, that is a switch mode power supply, but it's a laboratory power supply. But, uh, like I say, the old linear supplies weighed so much because they use transformers. Now, word of caution, do not, under any circumstance, unless you are well-versed in working on extremely high-voltage equipment, never, ever, ever take the covers off of this thing while it's plugged in. Uh, that You do not only have a 120 volt AC, or if you happen to run these on 220, because these can be run on anywhere from, what, 100 volts to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, um, at 10 amps. But, uh, you don't only have high, you know, AC voltage, line voltage inside these things. Switch mode power supplies don't have big transformers. I'm not going to get into how they work, but just be aware that there's extremely high and lethal DC voltages in this. Um, there's a lot of 450 volt rated caps in here for a reason. That's because there's, a, there's high, high DC voltage in here. There's knock you flat on your ass voltage, and you know, if you were to happen to get shorted out just right... It could be flat on your ass permanently type uh, shock. So just be aware, death in a box. That's why these things are high pot tested. You can see this when it's high pot tested to 2,200 volts. Um, that's a safety rating. That's another whole story. But uh, just so, just so you know, never, ever, ever have to cover off on one of these when it's plugged in, unless you know what you're doing. Um, you know, you do electronics and high voltage for a living. So there you go. There's just a, my version of coming up with something that's a little bit better than just shoving wires down in there and then having them run off to something. This gives you a convenient way, and it's on there, because you just got four four pieces of heavy solid gauge copper wire there. That terminal strip ain't going nowhere. And if I need to hook anything up, I just loosen the screws up. I can slide, you either put eyelet terminals in there, ideally, or fork terminals, but it makes for a lot easier connection. Um, you know, I can hook up multiple things to this, but... Uh, so there you go. There's just my uh, my version of a power hookup connection for converting a server supply over to a standalone power supply.